Good morning. It's my great pleasure to be here and I have a talk about uh, six, seven years ago, how we started the transformation from traditional system engineering to model-based system engineering. <coughs> Since I come from aerospace industry, so I try to take this topic like uh, how the aerospace system developed as much as complex today and how system engineering is in evaluated to catch up with a lot of challenge in terms of complexity. I will go through three sections. First, how complex aeronautical system takes evolution process. A few years ago, I met Professor Michael Porter from Harvard University in Beijing. He showed me he one of the Harvard Business Review, and it's a very good pattern to describe the general product system, how every product or system from early mechanical one to later smart world, every system come with embedded system now. Then the smart connected, which means or based on data bus on aircraft or based on network in our daily life or industry. Gradually, a lot of products actually is not stand alone as a mechanical or electronics. Almost every product, even simple like a microphone, everything become a system. That's not enough. So more and more today, we're facing the challenge into system of systems. The gentleman has talked a lot about this. So I will just go through briefly how we passing through this uh, procedure. For the early aviation products, which almost, let's say, half century ago, almost pure mechanical, whatever the aircraft, helicopter, even the cockpit, all the instrument is like a mechanical clock. So everything almost pure mechanical at that time. The whatever the components or subsystem or even the system, all the relationship almost is linear. So from the components to system, there is no same, no big change, and that reflect the thinking of traditional system engineering at the beginning. Then as development of electronics, so a lot of products become smarter with embedded uh, computer inside. One of the typical examples is cockpit become more electronic, or at that time we already have television at home. Then even before internet, we everybody knows that data bus has been working on airplane for many, many years. So at that time, not only mechatronics, even uh, a lot of computer on airplane has to be connected based on data bus. That's almost the same idea as the internet we're using in our daily life. So the system become not only smart, but connected. Then uh, almost all the products become more and more complex. And uh, originally, one of the components or function become a system. Usually in aircraft industry, we, whenever we are facing a project, we think about airframe, engine, flight control system, avionics, utility, and so on. So many systems start to fit the function that the aircraft needs. Then uh, as a development of products and the technology itself, so the many systems become a system of systems today, the typical one, I believe, like everyone, we take airplane in an airport, you can see that's a typical uh, system of systems. Uh, we call it air traffic management. And uh, even we're working on the next generation of air management. Even for the UAV today, many people think that UAV is trivial compared with original aircraft because many even uh, young kids play with UAV as a toy. But the real U UAV, in order to replace original function for the main 
90 airplane that the UAV actually become a system of system because the control station could control more than one UAVs, but even a lot of UAV could work with manned aircraft to become a system of system coordinated. So for the new or next generation ATM, we can see there are even more than the general system of system. It's many system from satellite communication navigation and with ADSB on the on board with GBUS on gra ground. So many, many system has to be working together. And that's typically every system could operate independently and you know, manage it independently. So and the whole system is take a process of evolutionary process. You cannot design, develop and all of things at the same time. So from the, this development process, we can see that the complexity of the system, or we can call the index of complexity, which means the number of components or elements, the number of relationship be between elements, and the number of relationship between the system and the environment. If we take every factors into a complex index, we can see that for mechanical system actually is very low. So at that time, the traditional system engineering is okay, we take approach, divide, and conquer. Usually, if we can deal with all the components, uh, combine them together, the system is going to work in a mechanical sense. Then when we go to mechatronics, the complex index increase a lot. And we face a little bit of challenge, but it, as we move to mechanic, electronics, software, network, so the index of a system getting more and more. Even now today, 70 to 80 percent of a function enabled by software, which cannot be dealing with traditional system engineering based on mechanical thinking. So uh, let's move to the second session. What kind of challenge you are actually facing in terms of traditional system engineering approach? As I just uh, said, based on mechanical uh, age, we use mechanical technology and we build mechanical system. So the traditional system engineering works fine. But as we move to electronics technology, the system become mechatronics. So I call the first one 1.0, which is traditional system engineering. Divide and conquer was a popular way, and we are educated and trained doing work in this way. And uh, as in uh, start from the 80s, so there are a lot of uh, computer-aided tools in I every discipline, whatever mechanics, electronics, or, or, or system, we have different kind of computer-aided tools, but all of them work in uh, individual discipline. Anyway, by modeling and simulation, for all these different discipline, we have done great job. Later on, I call it 3.0, we have formalized the process. So all the system engineering bef in the past, every company has system engineering, but they take different approach in different process. But based on modern management theory and methodology, so the formalized process actually make everything structured, everybody could follow this process and work with the complex system. But anyway, even through this formal three stages, the paradigm is still taken as a documentation-centric approach. That means even we can working in detail, precisely in every discipline, but the system on the top level, from uh, customer needs, from system requirement, even to specification, was heavily based on documentation or based on natural language and description. That means the whole is not clear, sometimes very ambiguous, even very fuzzy. But when you're down to the downstream or every discipline, they become precise, accurate. This is not 
complying with the methodology of system science and the system thinking, even system engineering. So we're actually work in name of system engineering, but not really work in that way. So that is why, <coughs> as the people working in aerospace industry, which actually rooted in system engineering, we are very proud of the outcome and the achievements we have done, whatever satellite or aircraft. But when we back home, when we check how much money we spend, how much time we spend, usually the customer is not happy with us. So we are proud of to the crowd, to the ordinary people. We are not proud to our custom. So that, that's why we do not feel very good. So uh, if we check the track we uh, has gone through and what we have done, we will see at the beginning, every, when every project launched, we are very excited to, to take over all the task. And from the requirement, specification, design, development, and so on. But everything, or most of bad things will happen during integration. And they will run out of the budget, beyond, far beyond the original schedule. So so-called project management are not in a very good shape. So the problem is we do not really, again, not very clear at the beginning. We do not have the clear picture on top and we are trying to dig deep to do the accurate job in every discipline. And we, we call a group of experts, but they do not have the consensus for what is the root cause, what is the problem. The problem is that people working in different disciplines do not have common language, could not see the same picture. We usually see do not on the same page. So we keep talking about the emergent property of the system, whatever system, even more in system of systems. But for the traditional simple mechanical system, we could predict the, the behavior of the system by look at all the components and the subsystem. But for complex system, we cannot predict everything later on. If we put mechanical, electronics, every discipline or components together become a system, then we have a lot of emergent property. Usually, we very much hope we have intended consequence, which means the emergent property is positive. But if we got negative emergent, which is an intended consequence, which means the system fail. So we hope that we get more of the intended con consequence, not a lot of surprise. Now the last session I would like to explain how we are uh, working on uh, complex system engineering, which means model-based system engineering, to dealing with complexity. So there are many, if people working in engineering area, they must have a lot of lessons learned to work on the documentation-based approach. There are a lot of problems because all this information or the data uh, spread across several hundred thousand documents. Whenever something happens, there is no lead, no clear lead or no clear thread to trace back to find out where is the problem. So obviously, there is a lack of ambiguous and a common understanding, as I just said before. And also during the design phase, we do not have the system architecture could across multi-domain to help people understand each other. Then even for the test information, it's difficult to find an error early and make a correction early. We have to wait until to final stage. Then for the engineering analysis, also we have a difficulty to trace back. Actually, in uh, documentation-centric system engineering, we really do not have the clear thread, or we call it a traceability. So that's why whenever something happened, 
we spend more time to rework, redo, and recheck. So we, the V chart describes the process of system engineering originally from software engineering, finally goes to system engineering. In theory, it looks very smoothly, but act in reality, the V chart is not smoothly. We know that right after requirement and a system uh, analysis, they go to different discipline immediately, and more and more people working in different uh, branch. And uh, until to this time, they could not talk to each other because engineers working in different domain, they do not understand each other and they even don't want to understand each other. Right? Because everybody thinks they're expert in their domain, they're always right, and you are always wrong. <laughs> and if something happened later on, So we have to go back. So that's we call it iteration. So what does it mean this iteration? That means at least three to five years for aircraft, or millions, billions of money. So this iteration costs too much. So the the problem, of course, is we can uh, we can only have the structure and function analysis in this stage, we do not have function verification and the behavior execution here. We can only do here by integration or test. So that's the major problem for traditional system engineering. So our purpose is how to do it here, to verify from beginning. So usually we see the verification on right side, the left side is just design decoding position, which means everything based on assumption. And uh, you just uh, verify here. But in reality, a 70 to 80 percent of problem introduced here. And uh, you can only find out uh, here. That's too late. So how to do that? So we need to transfer to model-centric approach, because when we're working on documentation-centric approach, even people read the same word, same documents, but interpret it in their own understanding. So still, there are a lot of misunderstanding. But if we, everybody working in a model-centric approach, based on the model, especially working by using graphic formal language, and they could model and simulate in conceptual level, so everybody have the common understanding on the same page at the very beginning. This will avoid a lot of mistake. It does not mean we do not need the document, but the document were generated from the model, which means even the documentation we have today already be verified through the model and the simulation. So the next stage, we have to deal with a complex system combine all the mechanical, electronics, electrical, software, network together. So I call it 4.0, which is model-based system engineering. So in the past, we actually take the mechanical view, or we call it a deterministic view. And now we have to take organic view, take evolutionary approach. So the Mr. President just explained this already. So by using the model-based system engineering, we could take so-called continuous verification. This word come from IBM originally. So in order to do that, we have to use the model. And in this way, we can uh, make behavior execution and a function verification at the very beginning from stakeholder requirement, system requirement, system architecture, this is a continuous verification. And uh, this iteration only cost maybe weeks or months instead of years. So the time and the money is much reduced. I think you have done that a lot, but we just begin in China. 
So the, if working on MBSE, then we have to start from custom needs to system requirement and to uh, requirement and to function architecture, logical architecture, and to physical architecture. This will follow that's a very rigorous logical reasoning process. So this will help solve original problem. We just could verify here, but now we verify every step to be sure this is okay. By doing that, w to see original chart, we hope we have more positive emergent property, less negative. So by working on model-based system engineering, because the early verification and the continuous verification make sure every step is okay, so we actually could see a look at the whole picture at the beginning, so we can predict what is the behavior of system instead of to do that later on. In this way, we can reduce the negative or avoid the negative emergent property step by step. Of course, we, we cannot avoid it completely, but at least could uh, reduce a lot. So uh, if we try to summarize how we describe conceptually at the very beginning, we have to compare the thinking pattern with our natural language. So whatever we try to recognize the scenes, finally we go to part. What it is, what it does. So that is the system entity and the relationship between entity or elements. But the relationship have a formal relationship one kind of that, which is ge geometric or static, that is what we already have by so-called 3D model by computer. But the relationship for functional relationship, interactive, dynamic relationship, we need behavior modeling, not only geometric static model. So we have to take the holistic thinking. Usually, as an engineer, we're very much concerned about what is it? How we can do it? Uh, what and how goes first? So actually, the why should go first. We should start with the why. So instead of looking at downstream to see the system include how many subsystem components, we should look up to see what is the context. So what is the for? What is the purpose of the system? So that's purpose-oriented, try to think about function. Second, we have to look at the behavior, which is process-oriented, and to see how the system behaves itself, because behavior is concrete, function is abstract. We cannot go, go to structure directly from function. We should describe function by describe behavior, then implement in structure. So finally, we'll go to system structure. If we combine all these three views, we should take holistic view to whatever the system is. So then we need it from thinking level to mapping level to architecting level. For the thinking level, we need the original philosophy methodology based on ontology or, or answer the question being exist. So yesterday in a SOS working group, a lot of people talking about ontology. Without ontology, we even do not have taxonomy. We do not have common language. Everybody keeps talking in their own way. Then we need epistemology to see what is a justified belief. Like I just said, how to verify from beginning and continuous verify, which means after verification, you believe in. Otherwise, what is the reason you have to believe in or just listen to somebody else? Then we need teleology, which obviously is purpose-oriented. Whenever we're doing, we have to ask, what for? What is the purpose? It's not just uh, by fancy tools or by very popular method. There is no best method than tools. There are only appropriate method than tools. So the second level for cognition, we need the mapping between 
the conceptual system model to symbolic system model, which is modeling the simulation, then to our object system. So the symbolic system today for system is SysMail language from Incosi. And uh, finally, we have to reason, as I just said, from requirement, function logic to physical. So we need to, from function to behavior to structure. So all these three level, from highest to a lowest one, but it's far ahead or, or above the physical level. But usually, engineer, even system engineer, are very much hurry to get into physical level in order to see what is the real thing. This takes a lot of time and spend a lot of money and they even do not make a real reasoning. So based on this, all of this methodology, we can see that system engineering do have, well, I think SysMail is a kind of ontology formal language already for system description because they really take function view, behavior view, and structure view. It's not just that we cannot just take SysMail as, again, another language. They have a very strong base in philosophy. So uh, there is a very good book from Peter Filler. Describe all this uh, different language from system engineering, SysMail top level to multi-physical system based on Modelica standard. Then to dealing with embedded system by using AADL, or of course, VHDL for hardware, UML for software. So that means if we combine all of this together, we can go to from system of system by using SysMail based on UPDM to system. Again, SysMail, then to all this discipline, but not the real physical discipline, still in the conceptual level, to the embedded system, to the multi-physical system to make function allocation, and to the hardware and the software. In this, because all of this iteration is happening a digital domain, or we can call it virtual prototype. So if we can take all the model and the rules across system life cycle, that's a very popular word today called the digital twin and digital thread. So the different domain say same thing in different words. In uh, uh, website languages, they call it searching engine. In system engineering, we call it traceability. But in smart manufacturing or industry 4.0, they call it a digital thread. So I would say maybe they share a lot of same semantics in common. And they're related to each other. So that is why without rigorous digital system engineering in the upstream, then you could not have the good smart manufacturing downstream. So we have to combine all of this together to answer the question in the life cycle. Because of that, so the, we, we do or we're going to have the total traceability in the future which much better than before. That means whenever something happened or, or the change and it's an expected change in environmental context or in intended change by take advantage of new technology, whatever, you have to make change impact analysis based on traceability. Then the whole system is going to involve whatever is needed. So supported by all this new technology, we can take evolutionary process. So in the future, there's no such word to freeze requirement, only the configuration management. So if we touch the industry 4.0 language, that means in the past, we do less work on the left side of the V in digital or, or virtual domain. We, we play with the physical stuff more on the right, but in the future, we will do more on the left of the V in digital or virtual domain. And we, we hope that the physical stuff could 
be successful at once instead of to iterate with physics one. So originally, we only have digital geometry prototype, but in the future, we're going to have a digital or virtual geometric function and a performance prototype, which means we're going to make or do the digital or virtual test even before manufacturing. That means most of the verification before the physical stuff. I think that's all I can talk today. Thank you. <laughs>